In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can install Python. And without further ado, we're starting right now. So if you're already using a Mac OS X, then Python is already pre-installed on your computer. So you could go to the terminal, you could type in Python, and then you're gonna find that you already have Python. But then note here that I have already installed Miniconda into my computer, and I've set the path to be using that version. And so that is why I'm using the Anaconda version here. But let's say that if you have just bought your MacBook and you type in Python, then you're gonna have a pre-installed version of Python. And in older versions, that might be Python 2.7. If in that case, then you probably wanna install the version three, as we're gonna be showing in this video. And so the easiest way is to head over to python.org and then head over to the download section, just click on it or hover on it. And then you're gonna see that it automatically detects what operating system you have. You could just click on the download button here and then just select the operating system that you have. So if you have Windows, click on Windows. If you have Linux, click on it or Mac, click on it. And then I have a Mac, so I'll click on Mac. And then you just scroll down and then have a look at which version you want. And then for each version of Python, you will see that it has a corresponding release date. And so you wanna select from the column here, stable release instead of the pre-release. So you wanna select one of the versions here. And I highly recommend that when you're taking a look at the possible versions that they have here, like you're gonna see that there's version 3.9.5, which is the newest one. So typically I would use the version 3.8. So I would use one version older, like one number older. So if there's 3.9, I'll use 3.8. And if 3.10 is released, I'll probably stick to 3.8 or even upgrade to 3.9. And the reason being is that the newest version of Python, most libraries are not supporting that. And so you might encounter some errors or dependency problems because the new version of Python is not yet supported by many of the existing Python libraries. So I'll stick to the older version just for compatibility issues. However, for this particular case, you're gonna see here that Python 3.8.11 does not yet have a file. And so if you scroll down a bit, you're gonna see that version 3.8.10 has a file for you to download. And so here we have two versions, Intel installer or Universal 2 installer. So let's go with the first one, Intel. And then you could just click on allow and then it'll download into your computer. And then you could just open up the file, click on it, and then you just click continue until everything is installed. Okay, so this is method number one. Method number two is to use Anaconda, and you could go ahead to this Anaconda website. I'll provide you the links in the video description. Or let's say that you head over to Anaconda, you could click on the products, and then you could click on the individual edition. And so you're gonna see that it is a open source version and it automatically detects your operating system. So for a newbie to the field, I would also recommend to go with Anaconda. But the downside is that Anaconda comes pre-installed with practically everything you need. And the downside is because it might occupy a lot of space on your computer. And so if you're space conscious, then you wanna wait for the third option, which I'll be covering in just a moment. But the good thing about Anaconda is that it's pretty beginners friendly and it comes pre-installed with everything that you need to get started in your data science projects or your coding projects. And let's have a look here. So Anaconda, the benefit is that it allows you to manage all of the libraries and the dependency. So back in the days when you install libraries, you probably have to compile the libraries when you install it. Or if you're on a Mac, you probably have to use Homebrew or you might need to use Boost from C++ in order to compile some of the libraries such as the RD Kit for chem informatics or bioinformatics projects. And aside from having Conda, which allows you to manage the, the libraries and packages, the great thing is that you could also manage the environment. And I know Python also has the ENV, the virtual environment as well. But Conda is also very good in that. And you're gonna see here that it comes pre-installed with all of these libraries, so you're good to go. So you have Jupyter, you have Dask, you have SciPy, you have the Spider IDE. So it is a integrated development environment, which allows you to have access to a coding environment, which will make coding a lot easier 
when you're coding interactively. And there are third-party plugins as well, such as Kite, which allows code completion using AI. And aside from that, you're going to see that all of the Python libraries that you would need for your machine learning or data science projects is already pre-installed. So you could build your machine learning models, deep learning models. And the great thing is it's free and it comes with this user interface. So you could launch any of the tools that comes along with it in an intuitive way. And if you're coming from enterprise, you could also have the paid version as well. All right. So you could click here to download it, click on allow, and it will download into your computer. All right. So let's have a look at the third option. Third options is to use the Miniconda. So in a lot of ways, Miniconda is like the trimmed down version of Anaconda. So let's move back to the prior page. So go to the individual edition. So you're going to see here that there's a lot of Python libraries here, which comes with Anaconda. But then for Miniconda, you're going to get only Conda. Okay, so Miniconda will not have all of these libraries. So you have the bare minimal. And then if you want to have Jupyter, you just install Jupyter. You just install kind of like an a la carte. You could install whatever you need one by one. So for here, you have three flavors to choose from 3.9, 3.8, and also 2.7. So most of the Python libraries nowadays is supporting version three, unless you're using a legacy version of some Python libraries that hasn't been updated in years, then you might have 2.7. But then for 99% of the case, you wanna stick to version three. And between 3.9 and 3.8, as I mentioned prior to this, I would go for the older version. So if there's 3.9, I would go for version 3.8. And my explanation is that the newest version may not be supported by all Python libraries because it is a new version, right? So the existing Python libraries might not have support for it yet. So if you have Windows, you want to download one of the version here. So I would go with version 3.8. And if your computer has a 64-bit version of Windows, then you want to click here. So on a Mac, it is 64-bit, so you could click either the Bash mode or the PKG. So the difference between Bash is this one will be a script file, probably in a .sh. And so to install it, you just go to the terminal and then you just type in Bash followed by the name, the file name. Or you could also download the PKG, I'll show you. And then you could just click on it and then it'll allow you to install it in a graphical like here. You could just click on continue and next, next, next until it's finished. And so a quick recap, in this video, I've shown you how you could install Python in one of three ways via python.org from Anaconda or also using Miniconda. And if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit on the notification bell so that you'll be notified of the next video. And as always, happy coding.